Today's episode of the Natural Habitat Podcast is brought to you by PrestoDoctor.com. PrestoDoctor.com is the number one source for you to get your online... No, I don't know. Well, hold on. Wait a minute. Hold up. You forgot something. Hold on. Um, PrestoDoctor.com. It's the number one online source to get your medical marijuana recommendation oh. in California. All right? Have you heard of PrestoDoctor.com, Ty? I have not, but I have now. PrestoDoctor.com. Here, look, I'm gonna while you're sitting here, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up their beautiful website because you can go there right now and get a meeting with a doctor. You voice chat with him. It's sixty. Sounds really convenient. Yeah, sixty nine dollars for a good price. An appointment. You get a. What is that? You got. To, hold on. Turn the inspirational music down just a little bit. It's too inspirational. I said turn it down. He turned it up. <laughs> I forgot. I can turn him down. <laughs> I can just turn him off if I want to. Uh, so what it is is that you get... What happened to the music? Turn it back. There it is. At PrestoDoctor.com. You have a voice... Uh, God damn it. I'm ruined. There's too much stuff going on. There's like the music and there's all kinds of people. I usually do this alone. Uh... I know that if, if, if Kyle from Presto Doctor is listening, he's going to be like, wow, I can't believe that I signed up a three-month contract with these guys. They're barely even doing their job. But what I am trying to tell you is that Presto Doctor, you can go there, have a video chat with a doctor, and get your recommendation that same day. You get an official recommendation in the mail, but your digital recommendation is good for deliveries that same day. So you can hit up a dispensary, get your stuff, if you are elderly, if you are disabled, this is the service for you. If you are fat, if you are lazy, this is the service for you. If you just got a new video game, this is the service for you. And um, if you just, you know, don't want to drive, you know, because I had to drive, you know, a few hours away to get my license and it ended up costing me about a hundred bucks. Yeah. Maybe you don't trust doctors. You don't like them. You don't want to look at, you know, you don't want to smell them. Yeah, maybe you don't want to smell them, but you're going to have to look at one doctor. But trust me, this guy is a he he's 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 a credible, very nice doctor. He uh he always trims his beard when he does his video chats, so you're never going to see some sort of scruffy fuck on the other end. He always wears his lab coat as well as a stethoscope around his neck, so you know he's a doctor. Um uh yeah, that's about it. That's pretty much all I gotta say about PrestoDoctor.com. You go there, you, you use the code. What? Do we have like a little jingle or something? We need to get one. Yeah, you should make one. A PrestoDoctor.com jingle, <laughs> and and then it'll play right now. And then I'll say, go to PrestoDoctor.com and use the code NHP to save four dollars and twenty cents off your recommendation. God, that was a horrible commercial. We just butchered it. <laughs> <laughs> I've, and it was also fucking three and a half minutes long. That's great. <laughs> well, I hope we got the point across. Um, today we are talking about the X Files. It is back, the classic show that everybody knows and loves. The Smoking Man. Is that the cigarette smoking man? What no, is it? That's me. Cigar smoking. Yeah. Okay, the cigarette smoking man. Uh, Mulder, Scully. We got uh, name other characters. Go. There's um. The studio. The lone gunman. The lone gunman. I believe there's a character named Deep Throat. That's right, and we yeah. were go we're gonna go ahead and get into them all, and in especially into Deep Throat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let's go. Let's dive in. The Natural Habitat Podcast. Oh my god, Jay. Oh my fucking god, Jay. It's the Natural Habitat Podcast. My name what? is Mikey Booyah. My name is... I don't know. Spit it out already. What's your name today? I don't know. I'm never, I'm never quick enough. I His know. name is Vestugio Galasquez, and we are here with our special guest, the mayor, Awesome Ty. Hey, hey. The, the mayor. Mm -hmm. The mayor. 
He has joined us today because uh, it's Tuesday. We're doing another episode of our new feature, TV Tuesdays. And um, we actually got a message from Ty recently. And he was like, hey, guys, you need to do X-Files. The, new, the show's coming back. They did. Did you hear about the the UFO that they crash landed at the Grove in LA? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Joe, Joey was um, saying, telling me about that. I don't even know what to call you, man. Vestugio. It's, it's constantly Vestugio. changed. Vestugio, today, my bad. Today it's Vestugio. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow it was gonna be something else. Every but yeah, day yeah. New. Vestugio was telling me about that, and I, lo- I looked at the pictures. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Uh, it's good promo. And, and then once you saw the, like the the first episode, I think it was like the actual UFO that they used in that episode, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It was uh it wasn't the, the the replica that they made, but it was the one that that they took it from. Yeah, yeah. when they cut to it, I saw it, and it looked exactly the same. So, that's dope. And um, you hit us up. You said that we should do this episode on X Files, and I said, well, you should come and do it with us. And you hopped on a, a train. Was this an Amtrak train across the United States? Yes, from Washington D.C. Actually, I was working in the Pentagon doing some top secret work, which we can't really discuss right now. But well, anyways, yeah, I took a I took a Amtrak, several Greyhounds, another Amtrak. There's there's some regional trains that I had to catch. Nice, and then another Amtrak. Mm-hmm. And now Good. I'm here. Well, Thanks. I'm glad I'm glad that you came, and I'm glad that you can make it. Can't wait for that. Glad Elon to be here. Musk. Uh, Time travel fucking train or whatever he's got. You know, that's it's gonna be cool. Then you is can it get California here a lot getting like a super speed monorail like on the Simpsons? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. It's the magnetic one that goes underground and travels three hundred miles an hour or some shit and yeah. it's supposed to get you from here to Frisco in fifteen minutes or thirty minutes or something. Yep. It uses like gravity and shit and just goes whoop. Yeah. Yeah. It says whoop. who you think would you do it? Would you be scared as fuck? Or would you like volunteer to be one of the first ones to do it? Um, I, I'd probably do it. I wouldn't mind. I, I wouldn't know, be bro. one of the first ones, but if I could be the actual literal first one, <laughs> then yeah, that would be cool. Cause I mean, what? if I die miserably, like at least everybody's going to remember me. Have you been on a plane? Yeah. Yeah. All right. How fast have you gone? I don't know how fast planes go. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have no, no clue. How fast is, how fast did your plane go when you were in it, Ty? Uh, I, yeah, we don't know. Typical yeah. commercial airline speed, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> American Airlines. Yeah, well, I visual. think it's going to be a lot different in a small vehicle going traveling at that rate of speed. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's fucking... I I, I just can't even imagine. You know what I mean? Like, 300 miles way, an hour is fast yeah. as fuck. Especially, like, on a slow climb to that. But what the fuck? You the way like, I see it is that the high speeds will keep everyone pinned to their seat. And it'll just keep down the subway rapes, which is a thing that we all have to deal with. Subway rapes are, <laughs> are they kill, uh, they kill dreams every day. So you notice well, I said I, I didn't say I traveled the subway at any time. Yeah, Ty knows. I avoided the subway. The underground rails are just a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. So uh, uh, I, another know, tip from the mayor. <laughs> it could be good. It could be good. So we are not here to promote elon musk yet again we are here I, to promote the x files the x files is fucking back it is what yeah it's back on fox for a six season a six episode season six episode tenth season yeah yeah did that, it start right where it left off uh kind of kind of i mean like well, no. did you did you watch that second movie that they put out like in like 2010 i think no, I didn't even watch the first movie. Yeah, I don't think anybody watched that second movie, but the second movie was really bad, and they ended it with Mulder and Scully like finally getting together. Oh, and shit. And then the show picks up present day, and they've, for whatever reason, broken up and gone their second ways until Skinner calls them both back to DC and announces that the X-Files are being reopened. Yep, and yeah. they're just all old as fuck. Super but, old. But they use the same, uh, the same intro sequence. So they show the beginning of the show, and they're all old as shit, and then it does the intro title theme, and they're all like 32 again, and then, uh, and then it jumps back to them being old as fuck. So. But yes. one thing that they do have for them is that in the original show, everybody else that was on the cast was old as balls, and they were young. So they're actually looking good in comparison to some of the other people that are still around. Okay, you know I mean? honest opinions. Um, have you gone back and watched any of the original series? Yeah, I've been watching it in preparation for this and in preparation for the new season. I started watching some of them on Netflix. Yeah. I was just kind of picking and choosing like the episodes that I remember as being tight. 
Yeah. Uh, okay, so you didn't try didn't, to like start chronologically yeah, and just I mean, go from taken, the beginning. That would have taken months. So. Yeah. Yeah. See, yeah, I, I recently go. tried. I gave it a chance. Started from episode one, like the pilot and everything, and I swear I made it like two or three episodes and stopped. Yeah. I just couldn't do it, you know. And I was like, I I remember liking the X Files back in the day. But well, maybe maybe it was a it. maybe it was slow starting. You know what I mean? Like yeah, and that's what I think too. And then and then I was like thinking, oh, I should go back and give it another yeah. shot. It's well, the same thing with the Twilight Zone. The Twilight Zone is an amazing show, but there's a whole shitload of episodes that are horrible that you just can't sit through, and that's yeah. not their fault. That's just how it goes. Well, with the X Files, there's two different types of episodes. There's the episodes that kind of follow the ongoing investigation of Mulder and Scully into the government conspiracy and, you know, Mulder's sister yeah. being abducted. And then there's also the self-contained episodes where Mulder and Scully are, like, kind of out investigating some random monster or some fucking voodoo shit in the desert of Nevada. Yeah. Or right. some, you know, some bullshit like that. And I never really liked the, the, the second you know the second type of episodes quite as much i was more into the episodes where really focused on the government conspiracy shit and it had like a linear like timeline that you yeah. kind of like follow or whatever yeah, yeah. see i should have took the mayoral tip <laughs> no homo <laughs> and started from the cool episodes though you know what i'm saying like yeah i, sh I shouldn't have just try to start at the beginning but lately i've just like all the all the classic shows that I've gone back and watched over again, I've all I've started on all of them at the first episode and tried to watch them from start to finish. You know, like the '70s show I've done multiple times, and like I don't know a bunch of just a bunch of old shows like that. I'll go back and I always like to like start at the beginning, and I thought fucking it would be cool to do the X Files, and yeah. I just fucking was like, see, but Mwah. see, but another thing you have to keep in mind is that the X Files, um, they were notorious for every episode had a different writer. Had, yeah, had a different producer and it was always people trying to tell their stories and a lot of these people went on to be you know great directors and producers themselves in their own rights the show yeah. just had one creator and that yeah. was uh that his that gentleman's name chris was carter. chris yeah. carter and he uh he was the creator of the show and he would bring in people for different episodes so yeah, every, I feel like every um, episode a lot, had a a different lot more feel. shows than you realize are like that, though. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of shows ha have guest directors and have, you know what I'm saying, all the time. Like, Kevin Smith's made his career off doing that, guest directing on TV shows and other things. You know what I mean? It's like it's like a lot of people really do that for a lot of shows, so I don't think that that's, like, the only factor. They still have to follow some type of fucking guideline, even if they're not a... Yeah. No, I don't know about you guys, but for me, the X Files really introduced the idea that the government is keeping some shit from me, and things aren't quite what they seem as far as that goes. I mean, like prior to that, you know, I really only you only got what you heard in school. Yeah. 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 I'm gonna have to agree with like, that I, too. I think that's um, really what got me. As, like as a kid, as a like sitcom. it was just kind of like blew my mind. Like, whoa! Like, is is you know, could this shit really be mm -hmm. happening? Because these aren't just crackpots out in the fucking field somewhere. These are like agents. They Question. and they're not even FBI agents. They are agents of the Federal Bureau of Justice, United States Department of Investigation, because they legally <laughs> couldn't say FBI. But they're agents nonetheless. And, you know, that adds credibility to their story. They're saying things, you know, scientifically providing all this proof that you may or may not think is real, because a lot of it was based off of actual allegations like, you know, Roswell and Area 51 and all this shit. Or actual sightings that would happen, they would you know base shit off of that. So uh, I agree, it definitely opened up the doors to that like uh, to that whole world of like the unknown and the truth being uh, being hidden from us. And I think that for anybody who's caught this new season, uh, I think it's dope how they're they're touching on that and playing on on that whole thing of like the truth being hidden even from people up high that think they know the truth don't really know what's going on it reminds me of us we don't really know what the hell's happening here you know no. what i mean but something's happening and i think that there's some sort of drugs involved but i don't know you know we're just kind of we come here we record we show up we watch movies and shit and uh eventually we're gonna get charged for all of this oh well but cheers to wait for them <laughs> yeah until that day so um Ty, as as the mayor, would you care to join us in an NHP smoke sesh? Uh, I think I have to, right? I think, I think it's so. customary. I think it is. Well, it, it and went, it's in the contract. Yeah, it's not. 
you don't have to, and there really isn't like any repercussions. It would just hurt my feelings, and I'd probably cry for the rest of that. Well, typically my role as mayor consists mostly of wearing a sash, cutting ribbons, <laughs> and um, you that's know, about it. <laughs> but, but you know, today I'm going to make an exception. All right, yeah. shaking hands and kissing babies. Cool. Yeah. Fundraising. Throwing first pitches. <laughs> That's too much now. It sounds walking, like a lot. Walking dogs. Sounds like there's a lot happening. Um, what else? It's very commendable. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. All right. Um, handing out like, keys to the city, oversized yeah, keys. Yeah, where's ours, by the way? <laughs> he left it on one of the regional buses. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we were talking about it before we started recording. I don't know where you were. All right, everybody. Time to uh, flick your bicks, snap your pics, and hashtag them NHP Smoke Sesh so that we can all smoke together. This is a pretty quiet theme song. what you guys should do for guess the theme song is play the secondary verses of these theme songs that people aren't as familiar with yeah did right. you know that the fresh prince theme has a second verse that nobody knows no, yeah crazy. I, I believe that i heard it one time yeah sometimes they'll like if the episode's running short they'll they'll play like an extra long theme song you'll catch them every once in a while man that's dope i think say by the bell has the same thing we and, were talking that we think that that show should come back and should take over with Will Smith being the new Uncle Phil. He'd be Uncle Will, and you know what I mean, like have his own family underneath him. I think have that'd his be own the story shit. with his own nephew that fucking moves in and shit. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, is Will Smith Dude. getting like less and less famous enough to where that might actually happen? Right? Well, mean, they they could flip it to where uh, I don't think like a fame level has anything to do with it. Look at Alec Baldwin. He's one of the biggest movie stars ever and one of the biggest TV stars ever. So, like, think, there's no, nothing impossible. I don't think you can really compare Alec Baldwin to Will Smith <laughs> in box office money, at least. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I Alec mean, Baldwin is badass, though. Yeah, he's been in a million things, you know? So, um, back to the X Files. There was, there was a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff that happened during the casting of this film. There's a lot of maybes and a lot of last minute changes that made it to, uh, you know, the cast that we know of David Duchovny and Gillian Anderson. Gillian Anderson? How do you say it? Gillian or Gillian? Gillian. Gillian? Yeah. I want to say Gillian just because I like yeah, the name. Wrong. Uh, so David and Gillian are now the, <laughs> the fucking the cast of the X Files, but originally um, a lot of people didn't want Gillian to get the part. And they almost re uh, recast her in season two when she got pregnant. And Bruce Campbell almost played Mulder. What? It was like all the way up until production. And then they ended up switching it to David Duchovny. But could you imagine Bruce Campbell? You know, I like Bruce Campbell a lot, but I just don't think he would have worked. I think he would have taken away from, from the mean, element like of the show. The X-Files is already has like a element of cheesiness to it, but I, mean, right. like, I think Bruce Campbell really would have given it, pushed, you know, it over like, the top. pushed it to the B, yeah. B level. It's too yeah. much. Yeah, he would have been walking around with only one arm. He would have been like trying to kill everything and shit. I mean, yeah, it would have been good. So. Would have been good. Would have been great. <laughs> but yeah, I, de I, I, it would have been a whole different show, and it probably wouldn't be the cult classic that it. Well, it it would be a cult classic still, but it wouldn't be as widely known. To where everyone and their mom knows it because everybody watched it in their house. It would have been more of like my parents were stoners, so we watched the X Files with Bruce Campbell. Oh man, but the special effects looking back now are so incredibly horrible. I mean, I'm sure they were state of the art at the time in 1993, yeah. but oh my god, watch that's that's another reason why some of those episodes are kind of hard to watch. Is just For sure, I mean, it's yeah, like, takes you out of it. But. That's probably what pulled you away from it, Joey, when you watched the studio. I mean, when you watched yeah. it. You uh you watched the very first season, so the very first alien or something that you saw was just paper mache made by someone's daughter, 
Well, and the, the dialogue was crap, too. You know what I mean? Like, everything. It was like, none of it was interesting, really, it seemed like. And I just, I really cut it off without giving it a chance. I tried to watch, like, two episodes, honestly. X-Files is notorious for really, really run-on dialogue and, like, characters speaking in monologue. Like, Mulder just going off on, like, a two-minute tangent about the skies and <laughs> shit like that. And that's definitely continued into the new seasons as well. Yeah. Well, yeah, I didn't. There was a lot of it I did like, though. You know what I mean? So I'm not going to like fully hate. I'm not going to say that. I just thought it was like really just hard to fucking, you know, I had to be super high or something. I don't know. So one of the most iconic, uh, I guess, um, you know, characters on this show was an accident. He was only supposed to be an extra and it turned out so good was the cigarette smoking man. Everybody knows him. Absolutely. When I when I started bringing up X-Files, like all of these older people were like, is the cigarette smoking man in it? Is he in it? That guy was dope. And he just turned out to be the freshest thing. Uh, the character who played him, William Davis, was Lucy Lawless's acting coach. And he was there because Lucy Lawless was in the X-Files. And fucking, he was just like on the set. And they had him stand in and do like a thing where he was going to be leaning up against a fucking, like a bookshelf in someone's office. And... Yeah, he's in the pilot. I, I know what you're yeah. talking about. He's just standing there smoking. Yep, just standing there. And uh, William Davis quit smoking 20 years before he took this role. And he didn't know the role was going to be so big. So he just smoked for, for that one shot. And then they ended up writing, in, writing him into like the whole fucking series. And he ended up starting to smoke again. So now he smokes or is dead or up. fucking whatever. <laughs> He's up. still in, he in it. Whatever. Yeah. He's in it. They show him at the like the uh, very end of the first episode. They're just like, he gets like a phone call. And they just oh, don't. yeah, that's and right. He's got like a hole in his throat and he's sm smoking the cigarette through the hole. In his I throat. knew it. <laughs> I, I knew that they were going to make him like cancer ridden or oh, something. Oh, dude, he's so old. Yeah. But, so uh, here's a fact that I've just seen <laughs> that made me think of a whole other tangent also. It says, um, Anderson was only 24 years old when she was cast in the show. So, and I'm looking at the picture of her, and I'm like, and that made me think, like, isn't it funny, or doesn't it seem, like, funny to you guys that young people, generations before us, looked way older than their age? Yeah. And you then, know, like, uh, that's a, that's a for real thing like, like we're supposed to she looks like 30 years old in that show yeah we're supposed to think was, that a 24 year old girl is a fbi or sorry <laughs> yeah. sorry about that not an fbi agent an agent of the federal bureau of justice <laughs> united states department of investigation yeah i don't think so yeah i don't yeah, think so she looked old as shit that's what yeah, i'm saying this like, was this was her first role and she yeah had, it's only her second time ever on camera or something yeah and fucking uh and she schooled it david duchovny wanted uh Wanted fucking Jessica Beale or some shit to play the part? Of course he did. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? That fucking sex addict. He was like, yeah, hey. give me some. <laughs> <laughs> no redheads. Yeah. yeah. They're like, here, we're going to put you with this no-name, uh, or uh, no-name, not-as-good-looking chick. So there's a story that I read about um, David Duchovny's appearance on Celebrity Jeopardy. Are you guys familiar with this at all? I am not. Uh, um, so David Duchovny went on Celebrity Jeopardy. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm not sure what year it is, but it was in the height of, of the show's popularity in like the, the first, maybe like second season. And it was like just blowing up. He goes on there and he did horrible. Like he did uh, astoundingly bad and bad enough to where people made fun of him for how many answers he got wrong. And it was constantly written into the show by the writers like over the next few seasons, uh, the answers to the questions that he got wrong. So like there was one question that he got wrong and the answer was like Little House on a Prairie or Little House on the Prairie or whatever. And it showed him like reading the book. He had to be like reading it in the beginning of one scene. And it's like a callback to how he got that wrong. And then after a while, Alex Trebek was in the show. He had a cameo in one episode. And then Scoldy is actually, or Scoldy, Scoldy, Scoldy's be watching uh, the episode of Jeopardy that David Duchovny's on, like, <sighs> while she's in a motel room in one of the late seasons, like season seven or season eight. 
So they just constantly referenced how dumb David Duchovny was and wouldn't let him live it down. Nice. There's been a lot of cameos in the new season, too. Like um, Joel McHale, I guess, is a somewhat regular character. Yeah. I love Joel McHale. He's dope. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, he's funny. Hard for me to take him as any kind of Jeff Winger, though. It's like, right? You know, I'm, I keep waiting for Abed to walk out or something. I know. But that's a whole different show. But um, with the X Files, like I think one of the things that's always stuck with me is Did you lose it. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> it happens. It happens around here a lot, and it usually <laughs> happens to me. I had a completely awesome point to make, but I'll come back. Well, to it. Uh, no, right. the characters, the characters. There's a lot of other characters besides Mulder and Scully. Like you said, there's the cigarette smoking man, and then there was the lone gunman characters who I always thought were tight. The the mm-hmm. computer hackers that occasionally help them, and then there's like the um. The black dude that always meets Mulder in the parking lots at like the most convenient time whenever he needs to, you know, like a critical piece of information needs to be delivered to the <laughs> audience. Yeah. You know, he just comes like and he's like, meets him in the back. parking lot from like the shadows and he just explains, explains something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's dope. It's funny that, uh, that you brought up the lone gunman because do you remember the spin off show that I do, they got? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, uh, in that show, in the very first episode, they actually told, um, they kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They had like a premonition of the World Trade attacks. In the first episode, it says that the lone gunman thwart an attempt by the United States government to hijack a commercial airliner and fly it into the World Trade Center, blame the attack on foreign terrorists, and use the incident as a precursor to a profit-making war on foreign soil. The episode aired on March 4th in 2001, six months before the Al-Qaeda attacks on the Twin Towers. So shortly after that, the show was canceled and it didn't really make it that far. But that's crazy that they fucking wrote it into the script. And not only is it, you know, the news story of what happened, it's the conspiracy theory story of what happened. And, uh, you know, they said that shit six months. So my question is, lone gunman, terrorists? Yes or no? Are they responsible for the 9-11 terrorist attacks? It's been long enough. We could joke about it. <laughs> what do you think? I don't know. I think that we need to look into these guys and find out where they are, what they've been doing, and uh, what they've been spending their Bitcoins on. <laughs> <laughs> cool Bitcoins, bro. So, uh, so I think I a thorough investigation, at least, at the very least, has to be done. Yeah. I didn't know that the show was in Vancouver. Yeah, they actually uh, they relocated the shooting. Yeah, so it was like in Vancouver for five years before they moved to L.A. And then David Duchovny made them move to L.A. <laughs> Vancouver's a, a really common spot for them to film, especially like when they're filming like what what should be like New York or a major city, and it's supposedly it's like really cheap to film there. Yeah. So a lot of a lot of people shoot in Vancouver, I guess. I've never been there, but yeah, it sounds Toronto nice. too. Toronto, I guess, is like good for shooting New York and L.A. Yeah. So it says here one time they uh, wanted to recreate the look of New Mexico desert in Vancouver, and they had to spray over 1,600 gallons of burgundy paint into a gravel pit to make it look <laughs> like, like red dirt in the fucking – so funny. And what year, a, what year was that? I wonder how eco-friendly that was. Oh, that yeah. was in – by the looks of it, it's like a first season or something. And it was not at all. Yeah. They are like, fuck paying taxes in New yeah, Mexico. Yeah, we're going to spray everything with paint. Yeah. Spray lead paint all over it's, everything. Yeah, it's probably lead paint. Yeah, <laughs> Canada will let us do whatever we want. Birds are just coming down and eating and it. Fucking whatever else. Man, that's cool. So they not only were they exploring the unknown, they were also destroying the natural yeah. habitat of the planet. Yeah, what an asshole. Nice. <laughs> so um, I was talking about earlier about how people would write scripts for the show how they would have guests you know uh, screenwriters and all this shit well there was this one guy who sent in a script for an episode but they ended up not using it the show's creator didn't like it but two writers on the show teamed up with this dude and eventually made a movie out of the script the script was called flight 180 and it was about um a woman who gets off of an airplane because of a dream that she has that her mother's telling her that the plane's going to crash. The plane crashes, and then it's like a story of her trying to dodge death as it's chasing her. 
which if it sounds familiar to you guys, is Final Destination. <laughs> and yeah. that originally could have been an X-Files episode. For sure. But they decided not to use it and then turned it into one of the fucking, one of the hugest and uh, fastest, you know, falling off movie empires ever, Final Destination, where the first one was great, the second one was pretty cool, the third one was horrible garbage that you would just immediately throw in the trash, the fourth one was never purchased by anyone, the fifth one was a mistake, and the sixth one wasn't bad. It's pretty much all just a, a series of gruesome death scenes. Yeah, so yeah, it's really just what you're into. There, I, mean. I found out that uh, that actually, like that that fear porn is what they call it <laughs> when you uh, when you watch someone die or someone being tortured like in a hostile movie or something like that and it uh, it actually triggers some primal shit in your brain that happens when you're like you know running from a predator or you know shit that we used to do all the time in the wild that we don't do now because we have cars and houses and cell phones and we're like leave me alone I'm gonna call the police <laughs> so like we're never in danger anymore but if we watch that and you know the audio and everything all compiled together, it recreates that in your brain and it makes you feel like you're running for your life and it's uh it's some sort of some sort of therapy. It also they prove that if you have homicidal tendencies and you watch movies like that, that it curbs your tendencies. And actual people that are like, you know, like in prison for life for prison, they did in life for prison. They did prison and they got life in life in prison for life for murder. All right. They showed them these movies and it actually like curbed their like tendencies and their wants and need to kill somebody. So there's a, uh, those movies like that could be good for us. And I think that's why final destination made it so far is because it really just made us all okay with our dick neighbor that we want to strangle. We're like, you know what? That's fine, because I saw a guy that looks just like you get his intestines ripped out and fed to him. So that's pretty much the same. You know what I mean? Let's smoke some weed. Is it just me? <laughs> Am I a weirdo? Am I the weirdo here? No. Definitely not. I guarantee <laughs> not. All right. You got uh, you got some, some music pulled up? No, I got, a, I got a clip. Oh, you got a clip? Yeah. All right. Lay it on us. Scully? She's my partner. Uh-huh. Dana. I don't feel comfortable with that. Hey, Scully, is this demonstration of boyish agility turning you on at all? Dear diary, today my heart leapt when Agent Scully suggested spontaneous human combustion. You want to make that honeymoon video now? Scully, get those little legs moving. Come on. I was told once that the best way to regenerate body heat is to crawl naked into a sleeping bag with somebody else who's already naked. Hey, look at this. Ouch. Maybe you don't know what you're looking for. Like evidence of conjury or the black arts or shamanism, divination, Wicca, or any kind of pagan or neo-pagan practice. Charms, cards, familiars, bloodstones, or hex signs, or any of the ritual tableau associated with the occult, centuria, voodoo, macumba, or any high or low magic. Scully? Yes? Marry me. <laughs> I was hoping for something a little more helpful. Oh, yeah. Nothing weird going on around here. Hey, oh, wait a minute. You didn't let me carry you over the threshold. Is this a compilation of Mulder trying to bang Scully? Yeah. <laughs> Just in case you never meet again. <laughs> Did he hit on her on every episode? Did he? He might have. I think he did. I'm not sure. I'm not I really. I think there 100%. was like a slight shot in there, probably on every episode. I think that's David Duchovny ad libbing. Yeah, for sure, because he's like all <laughs> horny and shit because he was a sex addict. <laughs> yeah, that's 100. Oh, percent that's so funny. Um, I don't even know if that's a real thing. I think that's just a bullshit thing to say when you get caught cheating and you don't want to like admit or whatever. Oh, I'm a sex addict and I have yeah. problems. I'm addicted to sex. <laughs> Feel bad for me. It's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it seems like it's a cop out thing when yeah. I was watching uh, when I was watching Making a Murderer have you guys seen that I have yeah, yeah. Uh, when fucking the the state prosecutor fucking Ken Kratz or whatever his name is 
he got busted texting some girl that he was like prosecuting for her case and he got her number like out of her case file started texting her all this shit all about how like fucking let's bang and like i'm married and popular and (laughs) fucking have all this money and she put him on blast and like sold the text messages to some like news station or some shit put him on blast and then he was just all like i'm going to rehab for pill and sex addiction and then his like wife was like fucking by his side all like oh he's addicted to pills and sex and he just looked all sad and it's like no you're just you're just a piece of shit and you got caught and now you're like oh oh yeah it's just these other things and like i just need to pray a lot and it's like i fucking hate that shit you can't just say i need to pray a lot and then everything that you did is okay now because you're going to pray about it and you're going to make yourself better what you need right. to do is disappear and come back a better man like david carradine or some shit not not the real life David Carradine, but like one of his characters. You know, go back on go on a vision quest into the forest, grow out a beard and some long hair, come back a noble, respectable man, shake my hand. That's how you do it. Don't pray about it. Sorry, I got so upset. <laughs> <laughs> so uh I have a I have one more dope thing that I found out. What you got? Um when when this show was getting popular and you know it came out in the early 90s and during you know the mid to late 90s people were getting the internet in all their homes you know what i mean there was a a surge of aol discs being sent to your house where you can get free shit and people were just starting to get connected it's the beginning of what we have now where we all have phones in our pockets and everyone's connected to each other with infinite information and they uh They were one of the first shows that had a big fan fiction base. People that would write their own scripts, uh, shoot their own episodes, you know, write books and create their own, you know, sub genre of the show. And, uh, the creators of the show and everybody in the show would always read the fan fiction because this was like a new thing. You know, you could go on the internet. It wasn't oversaturated. There was maybe 16,000 people on the internet total. So you could fucking, you know, go through and sift through everything and read shit. And there was one person in particular, her name was Layla Harrison. And she was a fan fiction writer that wrote books. They all read them. They all loved them and shit. And then she died of cancer. So the show's creators added a new agent of the Federal Bureau of Justice, United States Department of Investigation. And her name was Layla Harrison. And... And, abbreviate uh, it. What's the abbreviation for that name? Like FBI. What is it? It's FBI, and uh, that's it. It's just FBI. They oh, they work it? they work for the FBI, but it's the Federal Bureau of Justice, United States Department of Investigation. So there's a lot of extra stuff in there. Yeah, that's BLI. that they didn't add into the acronym. I don't know why. I didn't make it, but uh, I think it's dope that they added this character in and the character herself was big like a big fan of Mulder and Scully. She was always like geeking on them every time they saw him and all like, oh my God, I can't believe it's you. And they're like, yeah, whatever. But they did that in a tribute to, you know, a dead fan instead of just being like, oh yeah, sorry about that. And like posting on their Facebook page or MySpace or whatever it was, their AOL away message. They they made this whole character for her, which is dope. It just shows that the creators of this show were in it like, in it for more than just to create some bullshit and make some money. You know, they were making shit that they loved. They were interacting with their fans and trying to create this, like, this little uh, empire, which they did. Now, my understanding so far is that the ratings have been excellent. Do you guys foresee this spawning into an 11th season? I think so. Or do you think this is just the six episodes and then finally done? Um Uh I, I think uh, I think they're just trying it out. They're gonna put them out. They're gonna see how the internet reacts, how people, you unless know. like they kill one of them off or something, in, like the finale or some shit like that, or you know. Oh shit! Because I mean, it's already shot. I'm sure that you know, like I'm sure it's all wrapped. So, but we'll find out, I guess. In the, I was kind of I was kind of surprised that, like, the last episode is kind of like what we were talking about. One of those standalone episodes where they're just like off investigating some random monster. Yeah, I was kind of surprised that they took the time to do one of those, considering it is just six episodes. You know, like I figured they'd want to, you know, continue with the main story. But 
But it's cool they they stayed with their with their original yeah, formula. Yeah, definitely. They've definitely stayed true. Like the writing still is, you know, like seems pretty much the same as it always was, good for good or bad. You know, take that how you will. Yeah. I mean, it's always been a little bit cheesy, but I mean, you know, I was also watching it when I was twelve, so my <laughs> expectations for exceptional writing weren't quite as high. Right. I think this right. could just be a segue, you know, a small segue season into a movie. Because that's what they said that, you know, the whole point of making this show in the beginning was to gather the fan base and the budget to create a movie so that the movies could be, you know, higher budget, tell the story better and be, you know, more self-containing. And I think that's where they always wanted to go, which they did. They made dope movies. So, yeah, like I remember I remember going and seeing the first movie in the theaters like the day it came out when I was like a little kid and I remember my expectations being so high and like I think it was one of those things where like I tried to tell myself that it was better than it was but deep down I was like, you know, <laughs> this, this this wasn't that great. Yeah. And then yeah. the second movie that they did, like the one in 2010 was just pretty much shit, but I I, I could rewatch it, give it a second shot, but I just remember not liking it at all. Yeah, but, you know, now if they were to retackle it with, you know, the writers, I think that they're doing the season good. So if they were to, you know, take some take some good writers for from today, use the, you know, get the CGI that they always, you know, wanted and deserved on the show. Yeah, right. Definitely. And uh, yeah, I yeah. think that they could definitely make something dope. And the X-Files, yeah, if they just make like the X-Files movie. That's it depends it. on like how many people actually want it. You know what I mean? Because they have all the abilities to do it right. All they have to do is follow the original format and do it with the updated shit. You know what I mean? It's like it's very simple for them to do it. And I'm looking at this list I just sent you right now, um, and it's like I didn't realize that there was so many cameos in the show. So it, it like shows like really there's like infinite potential for like you know for new stuff to come out, especially with any, any, anybody would probably be interested in doing it. I guarantee it, it especially because of it's like heritage, you know what I mean? It was so popular before and was such a like cult thing. And it's like always been around in some aspect, even while it's been off the air all these years, you know what I mean? It's never, it's never really gone away. Yep. They got the nostalgic value and it's on Fox. So it's like, you know, you got uh, you got all of middle America. They just have their TV on Fox. All yeah, the time, so you're gonna get true. you're gonna get plenty of views. So true. yeah, look, there's a there's a grip of people that were in it. A lot of fucking, a lot of people were in it. So. I give it I um, I give it to to the X Files and the creators for staying true to their original formula and yeah. for releasing it on television on Fox instead of doing a straight to Netflix or fucking you know premiering it on Crackle. They did an old school. You know, once a week, we're going to give you an episode on Fox. You're going to have to watch commercials. We're going to do it like it used to be. So that's dope. When I watch it, I don't even fast forward through the commercials. I watch it completely old school. Yeah. That's a lie. I lied to everybody. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. You fucking liar. <laughs> but um, either way, I'm excited to see what happens with uh, with the rest of this season and... You know, if there is a movie, I'm going to go to the drive-in and see that shit. And I hope it's good. And I hope that Joel McHale's in it because he needs work. Yeah. He was yeah. in Spy Kids 4. All right? That's sad. No matter how many times you slice it. I think I'm going to have to seasons go in a movie. Uh, check it out. I haven't seen any of them, so I'm going to have to probably go start at the first one. Yep. Do it. Do, do it. it. And everybody else out there, you should also be enjoying the X-Files. Um, I Ty, when we get our check from the X-Files for all this promotion that we just did, I'll go ahead and send you your your cut <laughs> of right. $50,000. Excellent. Yeah. So uh, that should be sometime within some somewhere around 2018, I'm thinking, just because it takes time to write. Yep. Big check. Yep. You know, big check, tiny pen. And it's uh, one of those feather dipping pens. Right. You got to dip it in the ink, so it's a lot. It's Can a I mess. have a... Oversized novelty cardboard check? No. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry to crush your dreams, but no, we can't do that just because it's so expensive to make those. You could just take it out of my profits and, you know, like, you know, plus take it out of the 50,000 and then the new. Okay, we'll take like 48,000. Okay, plus cool. The novelty check. All right, that's a good deal. You got it coming. We're going to, we're going to mail it to you. <laughs> we're going to send it to you on a, an assortment of but trains But I'm also going to need like a, 
a regular legally binding check that I can cash. Because, <laughs> God damn it. I thought I was going to get away with that one. <laughs> Maybe next time. Well, um, Ty, thank you for joining us. We appreciate you being hey, you're here. You're welcome. I know you got a busy schedule. Another one. For studio, um, you... Uh, you uh, you look great today, pal. <laughs> I don't know what I was going to say, but there's a compliment for you. Yeah. All right, man. Take it easy, everybody. Hey. Peace, bitches. The Natural Habitat.